Welcome to A level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2020 theory paper 4. As always, we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. And today's lesson, we will start from question number 16 and we will try to cover question number 16, 17, and 18. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 16 says a such coil is used to investigate magnetic fields. The such coil consists of a coil of thin copper wire connected to two output terminals as shown in the figure. A student placed the coil in a magnetic field with the axis parallel to direction of the field as shown in the figure. The coil was rotated through 90 degrees so the axis was perpendicular to direction of the field as shown in the figure. As the coil was rotated, a potential difference was detected across the terminals, mean across these two terminals. For part A, explain why a PD was produced as the coil was rotated. So, first of all, we need to understand we have coil like this. And then we rotate the coil by 90 degrees. And the coil is inside the magnetic field. And coil is a conductor. So, this is very basic concept about electromagnetic induction. When we have a conductor and we place inside an external magnetic field and rotate the conductor, there is change in magnetic flux in the conductor. Or simply we can say conductor cuts the magnetic field lines. So, they will be induced EMF. So, in this case, EMF will induce, so simply we can say. So, this is very basic concept. You have to be very clear about this one. Induced EMF, if there is change in flux according to Faraday's law, or cut the magnetic field lines. Cut the magnetic field lines. So, we can say cut the magnetic field lines. Now, you need to understand the beauty of this process. So, in this case, if you just place the coil, there will be no induced EMF because there is no mechanical energy. So, in this case, simply what we do is we give mechanical energy and with this process, we simply convert into electrical energy. So, it's just conservation of energy. We give mechanical energy and we take out electrical energy. So, we convert energy from one form into another form. If there is no mechanical energy, it means there will be no electrical energy. There is no free lunch and there is no free energy in the universe. So, simply we can say EMF is induced because magnetic field lines are cut or we can say EMF is induced because magnetic flux through the coil is changing and this question has two marks so if you write on this you will get two marks so this is how you can write down your answer in a very simple way if you write down emf is induced you will get one mark but this is must you have to write on this one the reason state and explain so this is you need to state emf is induced then you need to explain because wires cut magnetic field lines. Basic concept about EM induction. If these things make sense to you or if these videos are helpful, please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important. So I will spare more time to make better videos for you. Part B says, show that the initial value of magnetic flux in the coil is about 9 times 10 to minus 5 Weber's. Diameter of coil is given to us and magnetic flux density is given. So, simply we need to calculate magnetic flux. How we calculate magnetic flux? Magnetic flux simply is the product of B times A cosine of theta and theta is the angle between area normal vector and magnetic flux density. So, in this case, if we draw area normal vector, so this is direction of area normal vector and this is also direction of magnetic flux density. So, it means angle is equal to 0. As angle is 0, so simply we can say this is BA because cosine of 0 is 1. So, this will be 1. So, this is equal to BA. Now, simply we need to plug in values. Value of B is given to us. This is in Tesla's 0.18 Tesla's. Diameter is given, so we can calculate cross-sectional area, pi by 4, d square. So, we have d, this is 25 millimeters. So, we have to multiply with 10 to minus 3 and square of this one. Now, if we simply solve, we will get 8.84 
times 10 to minus 5 vapors so this is value of magnetic flux quite straightforward one part c says the graph shows the magnetic flux in the coil while the coil was being rotated determine the maximum pd produced across the terminals number of turns on coil are given to us equal to 5000 we need to calculate v max means emf maximum and that will be equal to n times d phi by dt so this is so v max as v has maximum value when d phi by dt has maximum value because this is a constant now if you look at the graph we have flux on y axis and we have time on x axis so the gradient will be equal to rate of change of flux so in this case d phi by dt this is equal to gradient so simply we can write down gradient here then the gradient is maximum and if you look at this graph you can see the gradient is increasing so at this point at this point approximately gradient is maximum for simplicity we will be taking this point so gradient is maximum so this is how you can draw the line now you need to find the gradient of this line so this point we have coordinates 0.10 and this is 10 and here we have 0.30 and here we have zero so it simply means that difference delta y by delta x so delta y by delta x are first of all we can also plug in value of number of turns we have 5000 so we have delta y this is 0 to 10 so we have 10.00 times 10 to minus 5 and this is divided by delta x means delta t so 0.30 minus 0.10 now if we solve this one we will get our final value and final answer in this case will be about 2.5 volts so this is how you can figure out if your basic concept is clear simply you need to understand maximum emf induced is equal to n times d5 by dt and we can find the answer Part D says the output terminals of the coil are connected together while the coil is in the magnetic field. The diagram shows a cross section through one turn of the coil. X is on one side of the coil. The coil is rotated clockwise in the magnetic field, causing a current in the coil. The student states that the current at X is into the page. Deduce whether the student's statement is correct you should refer to lenz's law so refer to lenz's law it means we have to mention lenz's law in our answer and also this is a kind of hint now first of all imagine that we have two terminals of this coil so you can just imagine these are two terminals of the coil and when we connect these two terminals there will be current in the coil just for simplicity i'm saying this is direction of the current so current will flow in this coil when current will flow in this coil and this coil is in an external magnetic field it means there will be force on this coil this is basic principle motor effect we understand so let me little bit explain you about motor effect when a current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field so imagine that imagine that we have magnetic field to the right so this is magnetic field and inside this magnetic field we place a wire and current in the wire is into the page so we can find out direction of force on the wire so left hand so in this case we have current that is into the page so this finger represent current so current is into the page and magnetic field in this case is to the right so this is magnetic field and current is into the page so this will experience force in downward direction so this is the force so when we have a conductor and there is a current in the conductor and we place conductor in the magnetic field angle is also very important angle should not be zero degrees if angle is zero or 180 degrees because this f is equal to b i l sine of theta so theta should not be zero and theta also should not be 
180. Then this wire will experience a force and directional force we can find using Fleming left hand rule. Now for this question hint is given to us Lenz's law. Lenz's law. So in this case we are rotating this one clockwise. So if I look at just at this point it means we are moving this one this way just at very short interval of time we are moving the coil this way we can say this is direction of motion of the coil so by Lenz's law current will flow in this coil in such a way that it will oppose the cause cause is the motion so it will oppose the motion it means this wire will experience an opposing force to the left so this is direction of opposing force means the same force here we have force on the wire so in this case this is direction of force on the wire to the left now again you can use your left hand so this is f this is b this is i so we have direction of force we have direction of external magnetic field so we can find out direction of current so simply we have force that is first of all magnetic field magnetic field is down and force is to the left so let me write on here so you can you have b that is down and the force is to the left so current in this case current so this is current this will be into the page into the page so you can use your left hand so this is left hand so first of all magnetic field is down force is to force is force is to the left so you can see this finger is pointing into the page so student is right that's all what you need to say first thing you need to talk about what we have done in this case by Lenz's law we have discussed that when current will flow current will flow in such a way that it will oppose the cause producing the induced current so how it can oppose it will experience force in the opposite direction so this is how you can find out the second thing we can use Fleming left hand rule and we can find direction of magnetic field uh, we can find direction of induced current and that is into the page so student is correct so this is how you can answer so let me show you the answer how you can write on your answer this question has four marks so these things you can mention these points you can mention in your answer you can say by Lenz's law direction of induced current is such as to oppose the cause of current cause is motion so it has to oppose mean it will experience force in the opposite direction wire experience force due to interaction of induced current and external magnetic field as clock as clock is rotating clockwise this is wire so as wire is rotating as wire is rotating clockwise so opposing force on top is to the left so by Fleming left hand rule current is into the page so student is correct so this is how you can answer a tricky question if one time it is not clear to you watch video again and if you have any questions leave your questions in comments i will explain you as soon as possible question 17 says a potential difference of 5000 volts is applied across two vertical metal plates a sphere with a conducting surface is suspended by an insulating thread and touches the positively charged plate as shown in the figure the sphere becomes positively charged for part a complete the diagram to show the electric field around a positively charged sphere electric field around a positively charged sphere and this question has three marks this question is quite straightforward one so we have sphere that is positively charged so we can draw some positive charges here so this is conducting sphere so the charges will just stay at the surface now we need to draw the electric field lines as it is positive so the electric field lines will be pointing away from this sphere so we can draw these lines pointing away from the sphere pointing away from the sphere pointing away from the sphere so if you have drawn these four lines you will get the marks you will get the marks but if you want to draw some extra you can also draw here so charge will be uniformly distributed so when you draw the lines you have to be careful with that as well so uniformly distributed so we can draw lines here so if we want to extend a little bit we can extend so we can draw a line here another line we can draw here so this is also telling us that charge is uniformly 
distributed. So the length of lines you can also draw the equal. So this is a proper way to draw electric field around a positively charged sphere. The lines they have to start from the surface and lines should be perpendicular to the surface. So these are a few points you need to understand. So if you have drawn this one, you will get theory marks. Part B1 says, show that the charge on the sphere is about 10 nanocoulombs. Potential at surface of sphere is given to us and radius of the sphere is given. Now how we can calculate potential at the surface of sphere? So V sphere at the surface of the sphere. So we need to understand this is simply equal to KQ over R. And for this question we have to calculate value of Q. So simply we can say this is equal to V time mean V at the surface of the sphere times the radius of the sphere divided by K and value of V is given that is equal to 5000 volts then value of R we have that is in millimeters so we can convert we need to convert this one into meters and we need to divide by value of K. K is a constant and its value is 8.99 times 10 to 9 newton meter square per coulomb square now if we solve this one we will get 1.1 times 10 to minus 8 coulombs then this is about 10 nanocoulombs so this is about 10 nanocoulomb we will get 11 nanocoulomb so this is very close to this answer second part says the sphere moves away from the positive plate and comes to rest at an angle theta to the vertical show that the horizontal force on the sphere is about this one distance between plates is given that is equal to 10.5 centimeters the best way to answer this question is we need to understand force is acting on the sphere as sphere is in equilibrium at this point so we have one force that is the tension in the string so we can say this is t this is tension in the string and there is a weight of the sphere that will be acting vertically down we can say this is mg and there will be component of tension that will be acting this way component of tension that is acting this way and this component if we take this t this is angle so this component will be t sine of theta we are taking this angle so there is another force here and this force question is simply is asking to find out and this is the elect force electric force electric force quickly we can calculate so this is horizontal force and this force is equal to this now how we can calculate electric force electric force fe this is equal to e times q so you need to understand you don't need to write down all the forces i'm explaining this one for your better understanding because next time they can ask you what is value of t what is value of tension so you can calculate so that's the reason i'm explaining this is a uniform electric field so uniform electric field means this is delta v divided by t uniform field also means that value of e at any point is constant if e is constant at any point it means force is also constant so simply we can use delta v by t delta v is the difference potential difference between any two points and d is the distance between those two points means separation between those two points student often get confused with this one delta v is potential difference between any two points in this field and d is the separation between those two same points if this is clear now simply we can plug in values and we can find the answer delta v in this case we have 5000 so we are taking two points we are taking one point on this plate one point on this plate so pd is equal to this one and the separation is given that is equal to 10.5 centimeters so 10 to minus 2 multiplied by the charge on the sphere and charge on the sphere we have just calculated in the last part that was equal to 1.1 times 10 to minus 8 coulombs means 11 nano coulombs and now if we solve we will get the force 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons so this is how you can answer third part says show that theta is about one degrees and mass of sphere is given to us we have already discussed the force acting on this sphere to the right is 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons and this force is equal to the horizontal component of tension 
that is d sine of theta mean d sine theta is also equal to 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons because there is no net horizontal force along horizontal and weight of the sphere is acting down so this is the weight so w w is equal to mg and we can calculate value of mg because we have the value of mass so this is 2.7 times 10 to minus 3 multiplied by 9.81 so if we simplify this one we will get 0.0265 newtons weight is equal to the vertical component of tension mean equal to vertical component of tension and this arrow we can draw here we can draw here so let me draw longer arrow for your better understanding so if i draw arrow here so now you can see this is t cosine of theta and t cosine of theta is equal to mg we need to find out this angle we have this component we have also this component so we can simply say tangent of theta in this case has to be equal to t sine of theta divided by t cosine of theta t sine of theta we have that is equal to 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons and t cosine theta is this this is 0 0.0265 so from here we can find out value of theta so theta will be equal to tangent inverse of 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 divided by 0 0.0265 six five and if we solve this one we will get 1.13 degrees about this so this is answer and this value is close to one degrees part c says a second identical charge sphere is held in a fixed position the first sphere attached to the insulating thread is placed near to the fixed sphere the spheres exert a repulsive force on each other the force between the spheres is given to us calculate the distance between the centers of the spheres charge on each sphere is equal to this this question is simply based on coulomb's law so how we can calculate so in this case f is given to us and f is equal to k times q1 q2 over r square for this question we need to calculate the distance means we need to calculate r is the distance so this is we need to calculate so we can say r square this will be equal to k times q1 q2 over f so this is r square so we need to calculate r r is the distance between the centers mean this distance we can use letter d for this one so i'm just using r so this is we need to calculate so this will be k q1 q2 divided by f and we need to take the root of this one one by two now simply we need to plug in values we have value of k that is 8.99 this is a constant times 10 to minus 9 newton meter square per coulomb square and q is given 1.2 this is nano coulomb so we can write down 1.2 times 10 to minus 8 otherwise you can write down 12 times 10 to minus 9 we have two spheres so this is 1.2 times 10 to minus 8 divided by the force and value of force is given to us here that is 5.0 times 10 to minus 4 and we need to take the square root of this and if we solve this one we will get r in this case will be good 0 0.051 meters so this is how we can answer so you need to understand r is not radius of the sphere r is the distance between centers of these two spheres and this question is simply based on coulomb's law and this question has three marks question 18 says a student planned to use a capacitor in a timing circuit the capacitor was connected in series with the resistor to determine the capacitance of the capacitor the capacitor was charged while measuring the current i in the circuit the following graph was plotted for part a the value marked on the capacitor is 22 microfarads show that this value is correct and resistance of resistor is given to us so first of all we can simply sketch this one dc circuit rc circuit so we have resistor and we have a capacitor so they are connected in series so this is the circuit 
and resistance of this resistor is given that is equal to 240 kilo ohms 240 kilo ohms so for this one we need to understand how current will change with time so capacitor is charging so current will be decreasing so this will be i is equal to i naught e to the power of minus t over r c we can take ln on both sides so we can say ln i this will be equal to ln i naught minus t over r c now if we compare this one with straight line equation we can rewrite this one we can say ln i this is equal to minus t over r c plus we have this is ln i naught now we can compare this one with straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c so from here you can see this is a y intercept and m means the gradient this will be equal to minus 1 over r c so if we have value of gradient we can find out value of c in order to find value of gradient we need to draw the line so this is how you can draw the line so you need to draw the best fit line and then we need to determine the gradient of this line so in this case we have coordinates of this point here and we have also coordinates of this point so this is how you need to draw the best fit line means points has to be equally distributed same number of points above and also the same distance so this is the best fit line this is quite straightforward one you can see all the points almost on this line so we can find out the gradient so we have this point here so we have minus 11.00 minus we have point here this is minus so this will be plus 9.25 divided by we have here value of x that is 9.2 minus we have 0 0.00 0, and this is equal to minus 1 over r c and if we solve this side we will get about minus 0 0.190 and this is equal to minus 1 over r c so this minus with minus we can simply cancel so we need to find out value of c value of c so if we cross multiply cross multiply we will get 0 0.190 times rc this is equal to 1 so we need to find out value of c so this will be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.190 times the value of r value of r we have here and this is 240 times 10 to 3 and if we solve this one we will get our final answer and that will be equal to 2.17 times 10 to minus 5 farad and if we convert this one into microfarad we can write down 2.17 multiply with 10 to 1 and multiply with 10 to minus 1 multiply with 10 to minus 5 and if we simplify we will get so this we multiply we will get 21.7 and this is micro so 21.7 microfarad and this answer is very close to 22 so it means this value is correct so this is how we can figure out very nice question on capacitor so this formula is very important this one for discharging and also for charging of a capacitor current formula is the same because current decays when capacitor is charging our capacitor is discharging and this form is very important you need to understand how to write down this formula in linear form part b says the capacitor was used in a circuit to time a client between two identical metal spheres the spheres were suspended from wires the wires were connected to the circuit as shown in the figure when the wires hang vertically the spheres are in contact and the discharging circuit is complete switch x was close to charge the capacitor the switch was then opened and sphere a was released sphere a collided with sphere b while the spheres are in contact the capacitor partially discharged sphere b moved to the right the maximum height edge of the sphere above the starting position was measured calculate the maximum speed of the sphere b after the collision height is given to us mass of the sphere b is 
given to us so simply at this point we have to find out what is the v max of b after this rises to certain height so here is the height so we can simply draw these lines here so this height is given to us this h is given that is equal to 1.1 centimeters we need to find out v max so this is just based on conservation of mechanical energy we are ignoring air resistance so simply we can say in this case change in gpe this will be equal to change in kinetic energy so we can say the change in kinetic energy this is equal to change in gpe so here we have gp so the change in kinetic energy is one half m v square because final speed at this point is equal to zero at the maximum height so we can say simply this is one half m v max so this is the initial speed then here we have mg delta h so in this case simply mass will be cancelled so we can cancel this mass we need to find out v max so we can say v max this will be equal to 2 g times delta h root of this so we have 2 and value of g is 9.81 and we have in this case value of delta h that is 1.1 centimeters so 1.1 times 10 to minus 2 and if we solve this one we will get v is equal to 0 0.464 meters per second so this is how you can answer so this question just based on conservation of mechanical energy and this is our final answer so this is the value of v max for b second part says calculate the time for which the spheres were in contact and this time is also equal to the discharging time of capacitor so very important point you need to understand what this time exactly is the time the spheres are in contact that time is also the discharging time for the capacitor and for this question resistance in the circuit is given to us potential difference across capacitor before clean is given and potential difference across capacitor after clean is given and capacitance of capacitor is also given to us so simply this is a discharging circuit so we have value of pt so we can write down v as a function of time this will be equal to v naught e to the power of minus t over rc and this is our discharging time now if we take ln on both sides we can say ln of v this will be equal to ln of v naught minus t over rc now we can further rearrange we can write on ln we can write on this is v over v naught this will be equal to minus t over rc just simply ln so minus it means it has to be divided we need to find out value of t so we have all the values we have value of v so this is our value of v this is value of v naught so this is v naught this one is v and value of c we have so this is value of c and value of r is also given to us now simply we need to plug in value so we can say ln we have v that is 5.43 divided by 6.18 then minus t over rc value of r we have that is 49 and value of c we have that is 22 microfarad means 22 times 10 to minus 6 now if we solve this one this side if we solve we will get negative value so this negative negative will be cancelled and we will get value of t that will be equal to 1.39 times 10 to minus 4 seconds so this is the discharging time and this is also the time these two spheres they are in contact so simply you have to use this equation for discharging capacitor third part says the student stated that the average force acting on sphere b cannot be more than the weight of sphere a deduce whether this statement is correct mass of e sphere is given to us so first of all we can calculate the weight of sphere a we can say weight of sphere a this will be equal to the mass of sphere times g so we have mass that is equal to 28 grams 
multiply by g that is 9.81 and if we solve this one we will get 0.275 newtons now we have to compare this value with the average force acting on sphere b so how we can calculate average force on sphere b or in the exam they ask you to calculate average force on sphere a forces are the same because the force a apply on b the same force b will apply on a by newton's third law but forces will be in opposite directions so now we need to calculate the average force so how we can calculate average force in contact that will be simply equal to the change in momentum over time in contact so we can say this is m times delta v over delta t mass of b we have that is 28 grams because a and b they have the same mass multiply by delta v because we have already discussed v max here this is the initial speed when this sphere went to this point its final speed was equal to zero final speed was equal to zero and initially it was also at rest at this point then a come hit this b so its velocity change so its velocity changes from zero to v maximum so this is the change in velocity and change in velocity we have already calculated in the last part that was equal to 0.464 and the time taken in the last part we have calculated time in contact that was 1.39 times 10 to minus 4 seconds now if we solve this one we will get about 93 newtons about 93 newtons 92.7 something so about 93 newtons so this is the average force so in this case we can see average force is much much greater than the weight it means statement is incorrect so simply we can say suggestion is incorrect by comparison so simply you need to calculate these two then then you need to compare so we can say this statement is incorrect so this is how you can answer and that's all for this paper i hope this video was helpful and you have improved your understanding of these questions and also you have better understanding of these concepts if this video was helpful please like and subscribe and also if you need extra help and you're looking for more resources you're looking for worksheets you are looking for topic wise notes so please join patreon and the link for patreon is in the description of this video and also if you need past papers you can also find on my website and the link for website is also in the description of this video and if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments and i will try to answer as soon as possible